Welcome to the nave of the Congregational United Church of Christ. I'm Reverend Garth Schumacher, and no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Welcome to worship. Welcome to the nave of East Emmanuel Lutheran Church. 2020 has certainly come with its challenges and uncertainties, yet there is much for us to be grateful. We give God our thanks and praise for God's bountiful goodness. Welcome to worship. Welcome to the beautiful name of First Lutheran Church. We sure have many things to be praying for in these difficult times, but we also have many things to be thankful for. We miss our churches being filled with people singing praises to God, but we're thankful that our members are living out their faith in their homes, neighborhoods, and greater community. And we are also thankful that we can continue to worship God, and especially in these creative ways in our homes. We hope that you have things to be thankful for as well. Happy Thanksgiving. Welcome to the nave of our Savior's Lutheran Church. Um, in a year in which so much in our lives has been turned upside down, it's, it's great to have this chance to, to be together to remember the gifts that God has given to us that we still have to be thankful for. It's good to be here. Welcome to worship. Welcome to the nave of Redeemer Lutheran Church. Welcome to our congregation. And on behalf of the brothers and sisters in the faith here at Redeemer, we wish you and your family and friends and all of your loved ones a very blessed and happy Thanksgiving. Welcome to worship. On behalf of Neighbors United in Christ, welcome to the nave of Durando Lutheran Church. Thank you for joining this special Amory Community Thanksgiving service. Know that no, mat no matter where you are joining us tonight, your community and God are with you. Welcome to worship. Welcome to the nave of St. Joseph Catholic Church. I have witnessed our community exercising our disposition to be grateful, generous, charitable, humane, and courageous during unprecedented times. These acts of kindness strengthen our moral faculties and increase humanity's worth. Adore God, reverence and cherish your family, love your neighbor as yourself, and treasure your country while praying for our troops. May heaven bless you this Thanksgiving and guard you under all circumstances. Welcome to worship. I bring you welcome from Balsam and Elam Lutheran Churches. We are very joyous and thankful right now because by the time you are seeing this, we will have ordained and installed Lori Kenyon Wood as our new pastor. And so we, in this difficult time, are very joyous and thankful to have a new leader for our churches. Welcome to our service. Grace and peace to you from the beach at Camp Wapo. Welcome to worship. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water you nourish and sustain us and all living things. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son, Jesus Christ, set us free from the bondage to sin and death and has opened the way to the joys and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and of rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit so that those who are here baptized may be given new life. Wash away our sin and bring us forth as inheritors of your glorious kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. We are gathered in the name of the Father. We are gathered in the name of the Son. We are gathered in the name of the Holy Spirit. Welcome to worship! Oh, 
Sometimes we feel like we are alone in our struggles and in our fears. In these times, it is helpful to read the stories from the Bible. The people of God were often living in a world full of hardships and worry. Even the most faithful people in scripture and throughout history had troubled lives. Faith brought these believers peace and strength. We are not alone. We are blessed with other believers and we are blessed with the very presence of God. Jesus said, my peace I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Our videos for this Thanksgiving service are taken in our local sanctuaries, another term for these beautiful buildings in the word nave. Our congregations are like ships sent out into the world, and sometimes we are shaken by the storms of life, battered by the waves of hardship, and blown by the winds of discouragement and fear. Sometimes in the darkness of life, we feel alone. Wonder, wondering where God is and if he hears our cries. The Gospel of Matthew, where we will read from tonight, reminds us that we are not alone. God comes to us and hears our cries. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake, with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, he lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He, he burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in this earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. 2020 has been a challenging year. Don't we all just yearn for a sense of normalcy to return? At camp, our campfire rings have largely been silent and man, we miss the laughter and the squeals of kids at play. And we've all felt it in some way or another. There have been cancellations and postponements. There have been isolating and lonely moments. And we've had a serious shortage of handshakes and hugs. And to top it off, we can't even see the finish line ahead. Yep, these are tumultuous days. It seems as if the world is raging and that fear and division and illness and uncertainty lie around every corner. But we can take heart in the words and images that we hear in Psalm 46, that even in the craziest of times, we can be certain that God is present with us in this very moment. We have nothing to fear. So good people, steady yourselves. Breathe in and out deeply and with gratitude. Protect our God. Help ease our hearts and minds as we set our eyes only upon you. <laughs>
Matthew is the gospel of God with us. In the first chapter, we read, all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. In the last chapter of Matthew, Jesus says, all authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the ages. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Our Gospel reading from the 14th chapter of Matthew, verse 22. Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. Wow! I, I, I cannot believe we fed those thousands of people with five loaves of bread and two fish. I'll say we'll never go hungry again! <laughs> How did you do that, Jesus? Hey, leave him alone. Can't you see? He's still mourning over the loss of his cousin John. I'm sorry, Jesus. You're right, you're right. Um, um, I tell you what, uh, he was such a good man. He, he baptized so many people, including you, and they, everybody turned their lives around. I'm sorry for the loss. Say, um, why don't we get in the boat and uh, we'll paddle across and, and you don't have to do anything. You can just sit and relax, okay? Okay. See, I told you you talked too much. Wait, what? You, you, want, us, you want us all to get in the boat? Oh, okay. Oh, you're not going. You're not coming with. Oh, okay. And remember, keep that mask on, Jesus. We'll see you on the other side. Have you ever been afraid of storms? Storms do not really bother me if I'm at home and I can watch them through the window in the safety of my living room. I do, however, get nervous when I see a, see a storm coming when I'm out in a fishing boat. Then I try to get, a, get to shore as fast as I can. Sometimes when storms approach us as the church, we want to be in the comfort of our sanctuary, safely gathered near to God and to other believers. This, however, is not the mission of the church. In the Gospel story, the disciples prefer to be with Jesus. Understandably so. They are blessed by being near him and are strengthened and fed by his miracles and his words. I am sure that they envisioned always being in the comforting presence of Jesus. But he had other plans. Did you notice the words of our Gospel reading? Jesus made made the disciples get into a boat and then he didn't go in the boat with them and after making them get into the boat he sent he sent them to the far side of the lake it is dark and windy and jesus is sending them to land of foreigners in doing this jesus was preparing his disciples to be missionaries he was sending them into a world with many challenges and fears he knew that God was with them and that they would share their faith and also that they would grow in their faith. We are like the disciples. Jesus still sends us out into a world that can be threatening and scary, but he sends us out to share our faith with those outside our church walls. And in doing this, we will also be blessed.
the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 24th chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse. Later that night, he, that is, Jesus, was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Uh, it's not fit out for man or beast! Keep the But the wind and the rain and the, and the waves keep pushing me, and my mask is getting soaked. Oh, the mask is so good and it gets wet. Don't you know? It's not <laughs> I good. know that. Look, look, what's that? Oh, it's a ghost. Help us, Jesus! Help us, Jesus! Again, we'd like to welcome you to the nave of Redeemer Lutheran Church, as all congregations in our area are welcoming each and every one of you to the naves of, of their churches. Nave means ship. It comes from the Latin word navis, uh, which means, again, ship, and that word for the church has been used since the very beginning, since Jesus created the church as he was walking on the earth and as he gave life to his disciples, fishermen. You and I have been fishermen in the boat of the church ever since we were washed with water and given life through the word of God in our baptisms. And ever since then, ever since then, we've been in the boat of the church as fishermen and fisher people, fisher women of the church, sharing the gospel of Jesus, sharing the love of Christ, going out into all the world as he said we should do. But all along, we've been suffering with winds and waves that have, have threatened our lives and have threatened the life of the church. And it's been that way ever since the very beginning. We all have our own personal winds and waves that buffet us and bash us around and threaten our, our very existence. We, we have the winds and waves of sickness and, and, and of sadness. We have the winds and waves of suffering. We have the winds and waves of persecution. We have the winds and waves of frustration and disappointment. We have the winds and waves of sickness and death. We also have the winds and waves collectively in our church, the old Christian church, and the entire world this year, especially of, of the pandemic, that we're, everyone's getting uh, knocked around and bashed around by these winds and waves. And we also have, during this year, we have an election that we're getting knocked all over the place because of the winds and waves of uncertainty and, 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 and uh, people not being civil to other people and that sort of things. And it's like, when is this going to stop? And, and, and we look around and we say, where is Jesus in all of this? Where is he in, in, in the winds and waves of my sickness and suffering and sadness? Where is Jesus in the winds and waves of, of this uh, tsunami of the, the pandemic and, and, and the uncertainties of our country and of the world. And he says to look out on the lake, look out on the waters, and he's coming to us where we're at. He comes to us in our suffering. He comes to us in the middle of all of our winds and all of our waves. He comes to us. And he says, don't be afraid. Fear not. I am with you always even to the very end of the age. He's here in the midst of our winds and in our waves. He's here. from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 26b through 33. 
They cried out in fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. walking on water. Jesus, command me, and I too will walk on water. Okay. <laughs> well, are you going to do it or not? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Here. Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh, help me, Jesus. I'm sinking. <laughs> oh. the Son, Son of, of God. God. And he even dried you off. Huh. huh. What was Peter thinking? Don't you sometimes wonder that? Don't you ask yourself, was, was he foolish or courageous when he made that decision to step out of the boat? On a calm day, it would have been a crazy thing to do, but, but this was not a calm water. This was a wind-whipped, wave-crashing kind of water. But what he was thinking about what Peter was only focused on was Jesus walking out on those waves. He was going to do anything it took to get out to Jesus. Well, as he steps out on that water, he, he comes to his senses. He realizes the crazy thing that he's doing. That's when the wind and waves start to beat down on him. That's when they start to push him down into the sea. That's when his fear started to overtake him. What are the waves that are, that are threatening us? What's the wind that's howling in our lives? What do we have to be afraid of? Plenty these days, even beyond COVID, those things that we have to be afraid of in our lives. What does Peter do in response to that fear? He cries out, Lord, save me. Has that ever been your prayer? Is it your prayer, your plea for help today? What's overwhelming you? What's pushing you down into the deep? What waters have come up to your neck? Well, in, in response to Peter's prayer, Jesus doesn't simply urge him to, to have more courage or to keep his eyes focused on Jesus. No, when Peter begins to sink, Jesus reaches out and grabs him. Peter's helpless on his own. But he knows where his help can be found. He trusts that the one walking on the water will be able to lift him up. So also with us, Jesus will not let us go. He's with us in the midst of every crashing wave and howling wind that's blowing in our lives. Jesus will not give up on us. He will grab hold of us when we're sinking and put us back on solid ground. Where will you be when the next storms come? In the boat, walking on the water, maybe sinking below the waves. Your faith will be enough if you do what Peter did when those waves were crashing around him. Reach out for the hand that's already outstretched to you. Hang on to our Lord. Hang on for dear life, for Jesus is holding on.
Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Wow. I'm really glad we're here watching Jesus bless all these people. Oh, he's blessing all these people. Hallelujah. That means we're blessed too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But wait, if, if we're all blessed, then how come I mess up all the time? Because we're broken, all of us. Hmm. I mess up all the time too. But, okay, how does our light shine if we're broken? Because the light we have in us shines through the broken parts. Oh, the Jesus light shines through the broken parts. Yeah, the Jesus part in all of us. Hallelujah. 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 We started our service gathered around the baptismal font. We end the service being sent out in our baptism. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Jesus tells us, Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Even in this time of enduring darkness, the church is still active and united in the world. And as baptized Christians, we are called to bring the light of God. In these last 10 months, the church has been very creative with finding new methods for being the church in the midst of a pandemic. We learned new skills and technology, we overcame our fear of the camera, and we discovered ways to connect with one another without expecting everyone to show up at the same place at the same time. Perhaps this provided the push that we needed to get ourselves thinking about how we can bring the light of God into a society where God is becoming less known and more misunderstood. Every time we encounter someone who is facing a loss of any kind, we have an opportunity to let the light of Christ shine into their lives. We can bring a word of hope to the despairing. We can share God's unconditional love to those who feel unlovable. We can offer God's mercy and grace to those who are in need of a do-over. Of course, we also cannot ignore the many acts of service, from making a pot of chicken soup for a neighbor who is sick, to shoveling snow for our elders, to offering an hour or two of childcare for the parent who just needs a moment to breathe, to calling on those who live alone. The possibilities really are endless. Even when we think we have nothing to offer, there is always something that we can give. A word of encouragement and expression of gratitude goes a long way. There is no place where God's light cannot shine. Congregations, schools, local businesses, hospitals, nursing homes, police, fire departments, first responders, and ministries that shine God's light. Salvation Army, Northwoods Homeless Shelter, Food Shelf.
out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you. Amen. Amen.